Hey y'all, I'm Carol Corey, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Welcome back to my Creating Corner. I'm glad you've come back. And if this is the first time you found me, yay! I'm doing a kit today that I think you're going to just love. I love our Stampin' Up! kits. Every month, Stampin' Up! releases two kits in our online kits collection. The kit that I'm doing today, Your Day to Shine, has everything already stamped. There's no stamping needed. You just put the cards together. One of the things I like about the kits, I'm on a social committee for a rather large organization, so I send a lot of cards. And these kits, you can put, you know, 9, 12, depending on the kit that you get, cards together in no time at all. Everything's already cut. This particular one, everything's already stamped. So I can get a stash of cards, a stack of cards, done in no time at all. And if I really wanted to, I can always go a little rogue. But, um, yeah, so this one, is everything's in, already stamped and all. This would be a great gift for the crafter in your life, maybe somebody who's never stamped before, or to take, you know, throw it in your suitcase if you're going on a trip and you don't have to worry about inks or anything. You just, if it's a rainy day, just put it together. That's great. And what I do do, every September I participate in a fundraiser for the Children's Cancer Research Fund. It's called the Great Cycle Challenge. And what I did take from, and I take the <laughs> commission from every kit sold through my online store, including paper pumpkin kits. And all that goes straight to my Great Cycle Challenge fundraiser. If you're a cyclist and you're interested, I'll have information about the Great Cycle Challenge below and also about the Children's Cancer Research Fund. But yeah, so I'm excited about this kit. And I'm also excited because in May, our new catalog goes live. Yay! So I can't show you what's inside of it yet. But... Um, as a demonstrator, I get to pre-order out of this before other people do. So if you like to get your goodies right away as soon as you can, you might want to think about becoming a demonstrator. But anyways, if you'd like a catalog and you don't have a U.S. demonstrator, I'm here for you. Just drop a message down below. Um, I'll have my website information, well, up above, but also in the description box below. And you can email me through there, and I'll stick a catalog in the mail and get it going right to you. So, uh, let me get to this kit. Another thing that's good about these kits, when you have days like today, it's great to have something on hand to just sit down and watch a movie while you put some cards together. I'm in South Carolina and our pollen count is very high. Let's just say that. Itchy eyes. Yeah, I'm, voice is a little rough, you know, so yeah, I'm going to stay inside and put my kit together. So let me get this down to the creating table and let's see what's here. Hang on. Okay, your day to shine. Let's see what we've got in here. Opens up with sparkly sequins. Okay, let me grab some scissors. Scissors. Get into the package. Everything is shrink wrapped together, so when you open the box, if it's upside down, you don't have to worry about everything spilling out. So that's awfully considerate. And with everything being shrink wrapped together, the chances of anything being gone or damaged are pretty slim. Okay, so here we have some sequins in a little baggie with dimensionals. Oh, we love dimensionals, don't we? Sure do. Okay, so we've got our dimensionals. We've got our um, sequins. And here are some glue dots. Perfect. So there's all of our adhesives. And here, one, two, three, four, five, six envelopes with cute little decorated um flaps there. I'll put those to the side. Oh, look at these three cute little envelopes. Perfect for gift cards to stick inside that little gift bag or um, attach to your package. How cute. Okay. I like little cards like that. You know, little cards like this, um, you know, it's nice to keep some just tucked away in your purse and when you go to 
say, the dentist's office. Give one to the hygienist, makes them feel so good. Or leave a little card on the um, table when you're leaving a restaurant for your server to say, thank you so much. So cards are always appreciated. And those little ones, you can't, you can't mail something this small. But you can certainly hand them out and make someone's day. So here we go. Oh, I like that. So we cute card front with some happy strips across it. So there's three of these. I'll keep one out. Well, all together. <laughs> Look. Oh, how cute. Shine. Mon ami. Okay, so we've got in different word, in different languages, friend, shine. Mon ami would be my friend. I'm not sure what these are. Um, so if you speak Dutch or I guess this is Dutch or German and we've got the French also then or if you have a friend who does speak one of those languages you can really personalize a card for them can't you? So there's one, two, three sets of the words that are cut out. How generous is that? And here we've got some more die cuts. Beautiful, just beautiful. One, two, three sheets of die cuts with flowers, the vase, little tags. Okay. Here are some more sentiments cut out already for you. We've got, um, well, there's English and French, and I'm not sure if that's German or Dutch. Let's see. For some reason, I'm thinking it might be Dutch. Well, obviously, I don't know what language. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got three of these with our sentiments. And here's three more card bases. I love green. I really do. Isn't that just lovely? Who wouldn't mind getting a um, card just with all these pretty florals on it? Oh, and here's our little gift cards, our three little gift cards. How cute, how cute. Okay, so this kit is putting together nine cards, six of which are mailable. Okay. <gasps> vellum. Who doesn't love vellum? Oh, and little dandelion wish things and a couple little butterflies. Cute, cute. Some nice sturdy cardboard for some other crafting you might have in mind. And of course, here we have our instructions. On the back of our instructions, we do have a QR code you can hit for um, some stamping basics if you are a beginner stamper. And then we've got um, some detailed instructions for this particular kit. Every kit, you know, you're not always going to find a YouTube video for every kit you get, but on the back of the instructions you will find a QR code um, to take you straight to a video showing you how to put them together. And of course it tells you all the materials that are included. Nine cards, nine envelopes, coordinating Stampin' Up! colors if you wanted to do something um, different than following the directions with these materials. And speaking of directions, look at these directions. How simple can these be? All right. I am going to go ahead. Let's just start with card number one. Okay, card number one. I need the cutout that says shine, a vellum banner, the yellow striped tag, um, some dimensionals, it's your day too, and a butterfly, and some sequins. Let's put this together. Now according to the directions, we want to put two dimensionals on the back of our cut out smile. There we go. And attach those, attach this right to the vellum like so. Okay. And on the back of the vellum, 
behind your word, we're going to put two little glue dots. Glue dots kind of can show through some vellum, but let me tell you, the tear and tape does not show through the vellum. If, it, if you see it at all, it's just such a light whisper, you're not even sure it's there. Okay, so here I've got my um, shine, and I'm going to put it on my happy little tag, like so. And then four little glue dots on the back there. Hit those corners up. Now, y'all don't need to use um, tweezers. I've just used tweezers for so long, it's just second nature to me. So, I'm quite the fumble fingers, and I tend to keep my nails short because of working in the yard. So, okay. So, I've got this, and I'm going to put this on my card base. Here's my card base. Now, I am taking a bone folder. And I'm going to make sure that that card's got a good crease in it. And here on the front of my card base, I'll just put my sentiment. And you want to make sure that nothing goes over the edge or it's not going to fit in your envelope. Now, on the back of my It's Your Day, oops, got that a little, little off the edge. I'm going to put a few dimensionals. I'm going to use three. The directions say to use three and that will give it um, some nice stability if you're mailing it. Okay. And we're going to put this, tuck it right there, ah. right along the top. Perfect. I've got my butterfly here, and cute little butterfly. Of course, you've got a beautiful garden. Let's put a beautiful butterfly. And now, let's find some places to put some sequins. These are so pretty. They are so glittery. One. Oh, and you can, if you look closely, you can see on here where they have put that little bit of shine. Oops. It's your day to shine, so of course you want to put some shine on it. Okay. Let's put a oops. Second little one down here. Two, three, four. Where do we want another one? Let's see. There's one right there by the butterfly. Look how quick and how pretty that is. It's your day to shine. Of course, it's going to come in an envelope with the coordinating flap. So as soon as, not only is it exciting to get a letter in the mail or a card in the mail, but when it's got something special, oh, then you know, can't wait to open it up and then to be greeted with this. How fabulous. Now this whole kit, did I mention it's $12? Yeah, $12. I know y'all have looked at the price of cards. And $12 to get three cards like this, um, three additional cards that are going to be just as pretty, and then three little gift cards. Please. <laughs> it's fabulous. Fabulous. Let's look at what card number two is like. Okay, card number two is the um, little gift card, the little insert card. So I'm going to fold it, and again, I'm going to use my bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, they do come in handy for a lot of different things, but um, like if you're doing fun folds, you know, you need to get down in there having that point is good. But honestly, if you have a pencil, you can just use a pencil like that. Just make sure you don't get any marks on your um, cardstock from the, from the edge of your pencil. Okay, so here we go. I've got that folded, and it's nice. This is using the Happy Birthday Sentiment which stamped and cut out. So I'm going to put two little glue dots on the back. When you get your kits, if you look, you see that's those are solid dots right here. That indicates the glue dot. 
um, the open circles indicate using the dimensionals. So, two little glue dots on the back, and take off that little wax protectant, and we're going to put it down on this precious little pink banner, right like so. And I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of the banner. You know, when you're putting, when you are attaching and you have two layers and then you're going to be using a dimensional, it's good to have the dimensional cross over your two layers and that helps make sure that everything stays together. Okay, happy birthday. I've got my flower cut out here and I'm going to take the wax off the back of the dimensionals and I'm going to just put this right across the bottom like so. I'm going to put two glue dots on the back of this vellum little vellum panel and I'm going to do it on the horizontal I mean the vertical. Oh. And do it on the vertical and that if these glue dots do show through at all they will be covered with the floral. So we'll put this right there. Now we'll put a couple more dimensionals on the back here. Now this is going to be two dimensionals thick, right? Because we've got the dimensionals for your sentiment and then the dimensionals for this. When you're going to have that many dimensionals on the front of a card, a full size card, you can mail it, you just have to put that extra ounce stamp on there. So we're going to take this, um, I'm going to put a dimensional behind the little wish, the little dandelion seed head. That's going to get tucked in behind the flowers and I'm going to put a glue dot in the middle here behind here behind the little yellow flower. These are so cute. Aww. Okay. So, I'm going to start with this one. <laughs> Make it easier on my life. Uh, that's got the thing behind it. Take the wax off of these. Okay. We're going to put this behind like this. Cute. And we'll just set that down. Cute. And we're going to tuck this little yellow flower up under it all right there. How cute! And now it's your day to shine. We need some sparkle. Sparkle's always good. So we'll put one there. And we'll put one there. And let's go ahead and put another little one there. Oh, how cute is that? Oh, I tell you what. This, this little gift card just might outshine the gift itself. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And remember, it does have its own little envelope to tuck into. Let me get its little envelope out here. Oh, isn't that just so sweet? So there is our card number two. Just precious. Oh. I can't wait to see what number three is. Okay, card number three, and we're going to be done with the cards as designed in the kit. But you know me, I love to zhoosh things up a little bit. So hang out after I'm done with this card, and I have something to um, maybe inspire those of you that have quite a bit in your crafting cabinet. But let's get this done first.
Okay, so we need the blue vase, and this one is going to take a couple of dimensionals in the corners. There we go. And we're going to use this um, shaped die cut that says friend. Now, if you see on the directions, you've got little scissors because you can cut dimensionals, and this is saying to cut a dimensional to fit in right there. And that is about the easiest thing you can do. If you've got to do anything, cutting a dimensional is really not that big a deal. But you know what? Even um, if you don't want to cut the dimensional itself, along the side here, when you use your dimensionals, you still have an edge. Let me show you. So you still have the edging. That sticks just great. So you know what? We're just going to cut that out. Yes, we are. I'm just going to cut that edge and fit it down there. It barely fits, but it does fit. You can't see through it. Okay, actually the little edge there, little point might be showing a tad bit, but there we go. So there we have it. Um, so we've got friend, and we're going to put it right across the vase. Yeah, don't throw your edges out. They work just fine. Okay, put friend right across there. Now with this big Calypso coral flower, we'll just put three dimensionals on the back of this one. And we'll put a couple of glue dots behind this cheery little yellow flower. Does that look like a pansy? I don't really know flowers too well. What do I know? I don't know what that third language is on the <laughs> that came with this. I don't, <laughs> don't know what kind of flower this is. But I do know that I need a couple of stamp of um, blue dots on the back of my little hello. Okay. And while I've got the glue dot thing going, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue dots on the back of the leaf spray. There. And one there. And on two little vellum leaves. So, our first card that we did was a little on, you know, on the simple side. Our second card looked a little bit fancier, the little gift card. And this one, this kit is going all out. Okay, and on the back of the, um, oh, I grabbed the wrong, no, I'm good. Um, on the back of the little wish, that is the wrong one. Okay, I guess I put one of these on the little gift card where I should have used the little one. No big deal. That doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, but I am going to use the correct one on this card. Oh, golly. See, even when you mess up, it's not a mess up. It's just a design change. And on this pretty card base. Now we'll just build it all up. We'll start out with the vase. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Ouch. Okay, so let's put the vase along here, along the bottom. <coughs> and now we'll add in the Calypso Coral Flower. And, of course, the little yellow flower. Let's put the cheery hello across the bottom. A sweet hello, friend. Oh, I love it. Now we'll tuck some greenery in. Those of you that put flower arrangements together, 
I guess that's the way you do it. First you put the flowers where they go and then you tuck the greenery in to flesh it out. And here's some pretty little vellum to add a little bit of extra just filling it in there. There we go. And this one we'll put right here. Oh, how lovely. And now finally, we'll go ahead and pop our dandelion seeds in. Oh, cute, cute. It's your day to shine, so let's finish this off with some sparklies. We'll put one here. We'll put one. Now, these sparklies are different sizes. If you'll notice, we've got smaller ones and larger ones. So we'll put one there. And one more for good luck. One more for good luck. Where are we going to put one more? Let's take one more small one and tuck it in right there. Oh, how pretty. And it comes together so quickly. Now look, you've got these three designs and you're going to make like three of each you know so you're going to make several cards and this whole box this whole kit 12 bucks you can't beat it and you can do so much with these materials if you want to step it up a little bit let me show you an idea hang on let me clean all this up and see what we can come up with okay I have got a parcel of stuff out here <laughs> and um, so let me show you this is the card that I will be modifying now don't let this whole stack here scare you because what we're doing is really easy it's just um, usually it's just more the avid stamper that would have all the extra materials on hand so um, let's get started I've got this card base, I've got um, some Berry Burst ink, I have some white baker's twine, and some liquid glue, I'm, and I'll have all the measurements for these card pieces down below. So here I've got a scrap of Berry Burst um, card stock, I have a white card base, I have a panel that is um, five and a quarter by four of the berry burst and here I've got just a healthy size scrap of white and I really didn't need this it's just going to be to stamp a little sentiment I'm going to be using the countryside blossoms embossing folder and I'm going to be using the framed florets stamp set specifically the for a special person on a special day you know um, actually this would be really pretty too I mean think about it well I'll get into that later and I'm going to be using the deckled circle dies I'm going to be using let me show you these two dies this deckled circles dies isn't that just amazing look at all the circles all the different sizes I tell you if you need a size that's not in here I don't know what you're doing or what size it could possibly be but I'm using the third and the fourth from the smallest get these out of the way and I'm going to be using my paper trimmer okay while I really really do like let me get some of this scooch well let me do my stamping first and then I can really put it all away these um, stamps in the framed floret set are photopolymer when you're stamping on a photopolymer set you do want some kind of um, padding underneath it you know the red rubber stamps no because it's on that um, foam that hard foam base but I'm gonna take my berry burst ink oh. and on this scrap of white ink it up Ooh. okay 
and I'm just going to I'm not pushing and smushing and moving it around I just went straight down and there we go and that is going to be cut out in a tight circle okay let me put that aside and I'm going to be cutting a slightly larger circle to um, frame it with the um, little berry burst scrap okay now with my paper trimmer let me get that out of the way I'm going to grab my simple chamois and go ahead and clean off my oops, stamp set I've got some on my block there we go yes the photopolymers will stain but it doesn't inter it doesn't interfere with how well they stamp um, if you stamp it on some Versamark first which is our oh that's more stuff I'm using I'm using clear embossing powder and Versamark which is our watermark stamp pad but it's also fabulous for um, embossing powder embossing and, but if you stamp your photopolymers with the Versamark before you ever use them and just let the Versamark dry on there that will somewhat keep your um, stamp from staining okay now looking at this card base I love these flowers but I think I want them a little bit brighter so how am I going to do that oh, I'm going to cut this card base in half so I have the back half of it I'm going to use that and I'm going to cut out with my paper trimmer I'm going to cut out these um, the center panel As so. I mean it's great you can see right through your presser bar so you know exactly where you're cutting and there we are. Now I am a retired high school teacher and my students would tell you that I can be a little extra. So I'm going to be a little extra and no I'm not going to do that. What I was going to, yes I am going to do that because with this paper it may not make much of a difference but if you do this kind of card with some other paper you could do, use this technique using another paper and that might make a difference okay so here I've cut the flowers into strips and that's actually what I have this um, piece for. I'm going to glue them down on here and I might leave just a hair of a space in between each. Now this berry burst card panel you see I have it five by three and three quarters so it's going to be framed with the green. So and that will of course be put on the white base and we'll take care of that in a minute but let's go ahead and glue this down now when you're doing something like this you have to be careful that you keep your pieces in the correct order so that they match okay so I'm just going to take some glue and put that there And I'm going to put the right hand piece down next so I make sure I have as close to the same amount of berry burst showing as possible. There we go. There we go. Okay. 
Now, I'll put this one in. And no, I'm not going all the way to the edges. It's not going to matter, and I'll show you why. I'm going to place that there and see if that's going to be far enough. No. need to go a little bit over, a little bit over. And there you see I have the briefest of spaces, just the littlest of spaces between each panel. So it's going to have kind of that, is it called a triptych? When you have the three panels that all form one picture. Upside down. That wouldn't have been very good. There we go. So now we have the entire front, that panel done, with the little bit of edges in there. Okay. Now, right, I didn't go all the way to the edges. What I'm going to do now is going to show you why it's not going to matter. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to emboss this. I'm using the Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. It's going to add a little bit of texture. Now the really great thing about your Stampin' Up! embossing folders, they have this edge along the bottom. If you were doing something that had a very um, strict design, you know, like lines or something, and you wouldn't want it to get off, you can line it up here. Now this countryside embossing folder, you see in the middle is the flower, and it's got all the decoration around it. If I did it kind of crooked, it probably wouldn't matter much, but I would rather not do it so crooked. So, I can look through here, and it's up a little bit because I do want that main center medallion in the center. And I'm finagling it a little bit. Got to move it around, make sure it's right. Yeah, but when it's a handmade thing, is there anything that's really wrong? Okay, now, my Stampin' Up! Cut and Emboss Machine is a little too big, and this table is a little too shaky for me to use it, so I'm going to take this over to the machine and get this embossed. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and I have embossed my panel. Um, I don't know if you can see the design in there, but it kind of smushes everything into one. So the fact that I didn't have glue along the edges doesn't matter. It's all so pressed together. It's all good. Now I'm going to take my silicone craft mat. Now this silicone craft mat is great if you're using, um, especially for glues, you know, but it'll get on here, not your paper, and you can just take it right off. Now what I am going to do I'm going to use this silicone craft mat <clears throat> to protect my work surface. I'm taking my Versamark ink pad and I'm going to ink up this entire panel. There we go. <clears throat> Make sure it's all inked up there. Good, good, good. Let's get this out of the way. Now I'm going to get out some clear embossing powder. When you're using powder embossing, always close your Versamark before you open your powder so you don't get powder all over your ink pad. Okay, and I'm going to grab, grab. And I'm just going to pour the powder over this entirely Versa marked up thing. Looks like I need to add a little bit more to my bucket here. Okay, there we are. Now, why am I doing this? Well, like I say, I like to <laughs> I like to zhuzh things up. Now I'm going to grab my heat tool. Okay, I've got my heat tool, and before I turn on my heat tool, I'm going to close my embossing powder. 
you do not want to accidentally shoot your heat into your into your container of embossing powder. That really would not be a good idea. Okay. Now this is going to be a little loud and it's going to take a minute, but bear with me and you'll see why I'm so extra. There we go. Ah, it's, we're almost done. We are almost done. Look how the embossing powder, that clear embossing powder, how it just makes the colors pop a little bit more. It kind of brightens it up even, even nicer. And with the embossing folder, it adds that texture. And I like the lines through there. I think that just all looks really good. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mount it. You know, if, it, if your embossing heat gun makes it warp a little bit, if you turn your gun over and hit it, it it'll pull it back the other way. Kind of flattens it out a bit. Okay. So, now there are a couple ways I could do this. Oh golly, hang on. Okay, so there's two ways I could do this and I think I'm going to go with this way. What I was thinking, originally what I was thinking, taking the white baker's twine, while I was over there um, in, with the embossing folder, I went ahead and cut my two circles. Let me go ahead and glue those together and then I can show you what my original plan was okay so let me get this cut and then we can decide which we like better okay so if you're going to wrap your card base with ribbon you need to do it before you attach it to the panel so one option is to wrap it with berry burst and put it like that or not use the berry burst take the white baker's twine hold it between your thumb and forefinger spread three fingers out wrap it three times one two three and then you would cut it I'm not going to cut it because I'm not sure I'm going to do this yet Put that, attach that behind it, and have it like that. What do y'all think? The white or the... I actually think I like this. Yeah, I think I might do that. So, let me grab some tear and tape. Got a little bit of tear and tape here. And I'm just going to put some on the back of the ribbon. I usually put it on the card base, but I'm thinking if I put it on the back of the ribbon, it'll be just as easy. Okay. So, we're going to put that along the, a little too low. Let's come up a little bit. Come right around there. Yeah, that'll do. Um, good way now if you use the wet glue it will give you some a little bit of wiggle room but if you like to use a tape runner or you want to use the tear and tape I'm going to show you a good way to you know when you put it down you kind of have to be making that commitment 
<laughs> to where you're putting it. So if you're not sure if you're going to make that commitment or not, put your pieces on there. Pull only part of it off. Part of it off. And part of it off. Don't worry about doing anything with Don't worry about pulling the bottom loose yet. You might want to loosen it up to make things easier in a minute. But you can just leave it there. Okay. Now, with the end that you didn't have sticky exposed, that's where you can see if that's where you want it. That's where I want it. So I'm going to make the commitment and I'm going to push it down and where the glue is, it won't move. And then under here I had loosened that, so I'm going to pull that right off. And then just pull that out, pull that down, and that down. So that is a way to use your tear and tape to attach your card front without being nervous about it. Now I'm going to attach, now remember this this green right here, did I even mention that? That was the back of the original card. Here's another one of that set. It's the back. Remember I cut out the center? Well this is the back. So I'm putting, so I'm just going to attach that to the front of my white card base. That'll do. Um, you want to see how I did that again? I'll do it again. I'll show you. So you put your tear and tape down. only part of it and kind of tuck it out. And if you and if you had something really heavy on here and you wanted to put some tear and tape in the middle, you can do that. You can put the tear and tape there and just pull down enough to kind of get it put it, you know, maybe across this way where you could pull an edge to reach that edge. So there, and I'm loosening one side, right? Okay. Now, just get out there. If you kind of stand it up like that, then you really know you've got it in the right spot. Just remember to pull your bottom one off before you put your sides all the way down. Both sides all the way down. You need to get that bottom pulled free first. There you go. And there we go. We've got the card front on. And let's just take a couple of dimensionals. Um, where are my dimensionals? Okay. We'll just take a couple dimensionals, put them on the back. Loverly, loverly. Oh, this is cute for a special person on a special day. Ah, oh, and of course we do want, now if we put, I don't think these would show up very well. Maybe one of the little sparklies there. Oh, we could put a couple little sparklies on here. For a special person on a special day, yeah, we'll just sparkle that up. Um, there. But let's go ahead and put one of these brushed brass butterflies on here. So cute, so cute, so cute. And there we go. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Now that was so simple to do. Yes, it did take a few extra materials, but you know, sometimes it's worth it. 
Now this kit on its own, of course, you don't have to do anything to these cards. They are marvelous on their own. But if you want to do a little something something special, this is a good idea. So let's take a look at everything together. Okay, so remember the kit itself makes nine cards. So you'll get nine cards for literally $12. That's you know just over a dollar per card and each card does come with its own coordinating envelope with the little yellow stripes across and so you'll be doing three of these, three of these, three of these or if you wanted to step it up a little bit you can always modify your cards a little bit. Oh I just love these! I don't know where I can put this for you to get a good look at them but and this was our stepped up design which did use some extra materials and I'll have all those listed down below but you know what another idea that you could do remember you've got all of these sentiments that are written in other languages you may not need these other languages so what you do is you take a language sentiment that you are not going to be using and you find the sentiment you want in one of your stamp sets and you just stamp it on the back. So there you've got some great um, extra uses for the little die cuts that you wouldn't normally be using. There's no law that says you can't just stamp on the back. <laughs> so I do love this and you see how um, the clear embossing powder it does kind of bring out the color just a tad bit more so anyways I'm so glad that you joined me on these cards I hope you like them I hope you like this kit you know pick it up I mean it's a great price and of course um, for every kit sold from my online store you will be I will be making a donation to the Children's Cancer Research Fund. And don't forget also, if you don't have a, a U.S. demonstrator and you're in the U.S. and you would like an annual catalog, you can either email me, well, go ahead and email me through my website and I'll pop one of these in the mail to you. They're going, if this catalog will be available to order from in May. It's coming up one more month. Yay! So if you like my cards, if you like the kit, and you like my alternate idea, I'd love it if you would put a comment. If you're new here, I'd love it if you'd leave a comment and say, hey. If you're a returning friend, I'd love it if you'd leave a comment and say, hey. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, keep making the world a beautiful place. Bye.